I feel like I've finally made it. I'm getting the edge. What's up Tube Tube? Welcome back to Low Guido's Chop Shop, the second best gel blaster channel on the Tube Tube. And today we got a new blaster on the desk. You can see I've gotten the edge from Tactical Edge and it is... Well, that ruined the great reveal, didn't it? And it is a TE Ghost. Well, let's have a look at what this comes with. Patches, got some patches. Got some gels, got two bags of gels. Um, glasses, I wonder if Ronald McDonald would like to wear these. Got uh, some rail attachments there, and a 1100 milliamp hour 7.4 volt 20C battery, according to that box. That's pretty cool. Um, sounds kind of weird that, that it's cool that it comes with a battery, but the last couple of uh, blasters I've received didn't come with batteries, so it does come with a USB charger, although I'd probably throw those straight in the bin and just use like a B6 or something. But that's me. If you don't have one and you... This is maybe your first blaster then uh, that would be handy to have and it's something you don't have to buy. Gen 8 mag! I love a Gen 8 mag. Alright, let's get this out of the box and get a look at this ghost. Alright. Out of the box this has got a nice feel to it. I think this is aluminium. Upper and lower aluminium. Handguard aluminium. These sights. I feel like they're aluminium too. The stock. It's got some nylon in there. This looks like a battery compartment. There's nylon here. That seems. Probably out of everything here, that battery compartment seems like probably, I don't know, it could have been Let me have a look Pop this pin here And there's the battery, where the battery lives Now, this little bit here that covers the battery is just a very thin plastic, I feel that could have been a little bit nicer but, that is a pretty, pretty decent sized battery compartment, so you can fit your 1100 milliamp hour LiPo in there without too much of a drama. This stock, that, that is, that is just something about the little things, that extendable stock, I feel like I could do that all day. I, I, I would get out on field and I'd take the first step onto the field and I'd be like that's, that's, what, that's what I'd do, just, just that satisfying click of a spring-loaded stock I don't know why I just, I just like that <laughs> that is cool I do like that extendable stock. Oh, I'll tell you what else, oh, like before, before I even get too far into this. Anti-walk pin. Ah, oh, man. How many times have you been on the field and your uh, retention pin for the gearbox has vibrated loose and uh, it's felt fallen out somewhere and you've lost it, never to be found again. That is awesome. That's it. I love that design. Just. Like I said, I'm, I, I like the little things, and uh, that is an awesome thing. It is held in by um, Allen screws, so you have an Allen screw uh, which attaches to this piece, to, so it stops the pin from coming out either way. 
so that's cool. It does have that um, faux bolt in there. It's got a uh, metal ejection port dust cover or bolt dust cover, whatever you want to call it. It's quite nice. Looks like is that a blue trigger? I can't tell if that's anodized or um, or if it's just painted blue. But it is does give it quite a distinct look. Matches the fire selector as well. Um, also, it's got the ghost laser engraved on the magwell and inside inside the uh, dust cover there nice details it's got a little bit of weight to it um, it is mostly metal so it does have a bit of weight to it so let's let's chuck it on a scale this isn't an ideal scale it just happens to be one that I have here 2.4 kilos um, that looked like it weighed in it so that's that's got a you know that's got a bit of weight to it it's got a nice a nice sort of weight feels good not too heavy you don't want to be lugging around a big chunk of steel all day but I mean, by the time you put some attachments and things on this, this will have some decent weight. But if realism is what you're after, that's cool too. Hey, I just this quick, quick detached loop here. That's that's a nice touch. I like that. You can have your sling slung there, especially if you're a single point user like me. That's a good good spot to have it. And then you can just easily quick detach. nice details I like it um, this looks like that could be a quick release I have a feeling that is quick release trigger guard maybe it is and I just haven't worked out oh there we go yes it is it is quick release trigger guard um, that's the reason for that is if it is cold and you're wearing gloves that are thicker, you can get your gloved finger into the trigger area without too much effort. So that's kind of cool that it comes standard with that feature. Alright, let's load this. Let's load this up. Whack it on the chrono. Alright, let's get a kraken. Whack it in semi. Whoa! Whoa! What? Oh, I'll... We'll go again, see what's up. Alright, 310. 284. 310. 310. 310. 301. 304. All right, I think I think we get the picture there. Out of the box, decent hitting performer, a pretty big hitter with 300 FPS with like no modifications at all. Solid feel and construction. My only, I, I don't, I, I know this is a, a small thing, but I am I am hung up on this. I I love that. I love that. But I am hung up on this battery lid. Battery lids, a little, they, they could have gone a little bit better there, but that's minor issues. Everything else here, it's got a real nice feel to it. The motor, I'm not sure. Well, I guess we're going to find out when I pull it apart, because that's what I'm doing next. So I was just playing around with this a little bit before I take it down, and uh, I noticed that this faux bolt thing... It does have a bolt release on the other side here, and um, while it doesn't catch it when you pull it back, if you pull it back and press the bolt release on the other side, it does retain it, 
and then so it does catch the bolt but you gotta sort of press that in to catch it and then press the top to release it again I don't know if that's designed that way or whether that's just the way mine is but um, that's just something I noticed Again, cool little features. I like the clicky clackies. Alright. So, um, one thing I do kind of like about this uh, battery location, I'll just flip it over so you can see. The bolt to remove the stock is right there easily accessible and if you do have one of the allen keys that's got the um, angled tip so this is the allen key that I'm talking about it's got like an angled tip on it so if you've got one of these you can actually just get in to the buffer tube screw like that on an angle and and that angled tip on the um, allen key allows you to get in there at an angle and because of that it's um it's probably should probably have taken the battery out of there first but um yeah very easy to get that buffer tube off easiest buffer tube i've ever removed just because of that battery door that i'm not particularly fond of so the lord giveth the lord taketh away Either way, it does make it nice and easy to get to the um, back of the receiver there uh, to undo that buffer tube screw. Alright, continuing on. Um, we've got the standard takedown pin arrangement here. Now... Looks like I might have to knock that out with a punch. Alright. There we go. There is a retaining, um, like a retaining clip in there, a little sir clip that allows it to stay in there without falling out from vibration which is cool if you've ever lost these pins. All right, that's nice and easy to get the upper off. As we expect from any V2 type of uh, split receiver. All right, that's cool. Um, it uses what appears to be a J9 T-piece and a, and a um, J9 type nozzle with a little spacer. So, I see what they've done there. So it looks like they've got this little spacer on there to allow the Gen 9 type T-piece to mate up with the V2 box. Kind of cool. Um, I do like components that are kind of compatible with other things. Uh, it, sucks when you like get proprietary T pieces and you're trying to trace down the right parts and you can't find any because yeah they're proprietary and J9 stuff's all over everyone's got it does look like it's been modified a little bit to fit in filed down on the top section there take that out set that aside um, it's a cute solution let's take a look at this gearbox looks um looks like uh, I believe it's an APS Silver Edge or something like that is that what it is? looks like that type of gearbox um, I've I've used these before in the past to put into other blasters and I've not had any issues with them uh, they do seem 
fairly solid. I know there was a lot of talk about um, the early model of the APS um, V2 being a bit weak, but um, I I've also heard that um, they've improved their manufacturing since then, and uh, these newer APS gearboxes are significantly better than the the earlier ones. I don't know that for sure yet, but let's have a look. Let's open it up and have a look. Let's continue on down the rabbit hole. Oh, while I'm, while I'm actually here with the barrel, uh, I will check the ID. It's like 7.55. Maybe even just a... Yeah, about... 7.5 and a bit. So, it does look like it's some sort of stainless, perhaps, I want to say. It does look like a nice... It's got, it's got a bit of weight to it. Um, nice, solid-looking inner barrel. Uh, the outer barrel, for what it's worth, looks like it's a nice anodized blue aluminium. Oh, that's interesting. So yes, the outer is a nice anodized blue aluminium, or I can't tell if that's paint or anodized, but it's got a really cool crush washer on the uh, reverse threaded 14mm thing there. So um, if you've ever put your flash hider on and you've wound it all the way in and found that it's upside down or sideways or something and that triggers you, uh, this has actually got like a spring clip. I don't know if you can see it, but in here... There's actually a spring, spring clip that pushes back on the flash hider when you screw it in. So regardless of what position you stop turning in, it's always under tension. So that's that's a cool little additional feature. <laughs> Again, I'm I'm a sucker for the little things. I do like the little things like this. All right, uh, let's let's get into this bit further shall we break out the Phillips head to get this mag release out again apologies for non-transparent hands keep leaving my non-transparent my transparent hands at the other shop I will actually probably drop the drop the motor next before we go any further. It's also Phillips head, so that's handy because I still have my Phillips head ready to go. I like it when things run the same screws. Uh, get the motor out. It is a uh, a metal motor plate. Which is good. I think it's aluminium from the feel of it. Uh, it's good because motors get hot like they do and having a bit of cooling down there and ventilation is always a good idea because they are kind of, you know, cooped up in that grip area there so having a little bit of, not much ventilation, but a little bit of ventilation doesn't hurt. Something, some aluminium, something to keep it cool. Let's see what we got in here. Oh! It's the Evolution Edge! Am I not the only one who finds that mildly amusing? That the motor's called the Edge? Right, okay. Maybe it's just me. Uh, metal Pinion, always, always a good sign. I don't actually know the specs of this Evolution Edge motor, but it is the same motor that um, was in the AK, um, the the one that, that I did a review on not that long ago. Uh, seems decent. Seems decent enough. Alright, uh, now, Phillips, Phillips head again, good. Like I said, I like it when standards are continued. 
So we're going to take these uh, anti-walking pins out. Take it. That's a 1.5. Um, I think it's actually smaller than a 1.5, but came out easy enough. Now this pin does it need to be punched out still? Let's see. I remove both sides. Um, I do like those things. If uh, if you've ever lost a pin in the field, you'll know. You'll know. All right. I'd say this pin still needs to be punched out. All right, it is still knurled on one end. So um, pay attention to the end that's knurled on because it's only meant to come out one way, and that's that direction. Uh, all right, rear pin. While we're punching pins, again, there is uh Some sort of retaining clip on that pin. Okay, gearbox now shall be free. Ah, right. Okay, gearbox is not free. The uh, bolt release. Goes all the way through. So, looks like I will have to remove this bolt release. Alright, so the um, bolt release must be released. There is a tiny roll pin through the center of this. I don't have a pin punch that small, so I'm uh, doing shonkies with a tiny. Allen key and it seemed to work so don't judge me all right um there's the catch and now that that's out the gearbox should be free there we go there we go one good thing about these alloy gearboxes and alloy receivers. Nice, nice feeling, I tell you that. Um, the once they're released, once all the pins are out, they slide out real nice and easy. Uh, if you've had, ever dealt with a J9, they are a pain to get out. They just they just fight you the whole way. Um, but yeah, these V2s. That's one good thing that they're they're real good at is. Um, just coming out when they need to come out. That's cool. All right, we're gonna have to take that off though. Um, it's worth noting while I'm here, this mag terminal block. This is a nice-looking injection-molded plastic mag terminal block. It's affixed to the gearbox very firmly and it looks nice quality and the wires are run neatly 
into the front of it there. They're not going to snag on anything. They're done right. And for a long time, I'm, I'm, a lot of these mag terminal blocks were, were literal afterthoughts. Obviously, the design came from a V2 AEG, which was designed for something else. And then we've added mag terminal blocks on for for gel blasters. And, um, and it was like they were literally like an afterthought in a lot of in a lot of blasters and I'm pretty sure the version the first version of the APS um, gearbox that I had I think it had a 3D printed uh, terminal block and there's nothing wrong with 3D printing but it just it just seems it, it makes it look a little bit more like an afterthought whereas this injection molded block that's actually firmly mounted on there looks like they've actually you know put some actual thought into the r&d of of this blaster as opposed to going yeah we've got the box now what do we oh we need mag terminals whack so having an actual nice proper thought out mag block is 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 good uh and and like seeing them run neatly is always nice um yeah you know how i feel about the wires when they just sort of come out the side and Yes, if you've seen my video, you've heard my rant. All right, let's uh, get this apart first. I'm going to take off this bolt catch. Now, there is a spring behind it, as always. We try not to shoot the spring across the room. There it is. Sometimes I'm good at that and sometimes I'm not. I mean, I'm always good at shooting it across the room. But sometimes... Sometimes I catch it. That screw is very well greased up. Because that is the screw upon which your uh, bolt Rides on. It's kind of cool. Um, I think I believe. I didn't actually look when I was firing this, but just looking at the way it's designed, um, these two sections here uh, mate up with these two slots in the back of the box there, which actually sit behind the plunger. So this will actually uh, reciprocate with the plunger because the plunger's pulling this back. So I didn't actually, I don't think I actually even looked at that when I was firing it, but I can tell by the mechanism um, that it will reciprocate when it's fired. Because I can tell things by looking at them. That's one of the things that I do. Um, leave that little spring in there. I do have, I did have this massive Allen key, which is like, what? Over, overly massive, way too big for the for the job. There's not too much of a stretch to just force it out with something that fits in there. It looks like it's um whatever size is bigger than a quarter of an inch in non-metric Allen sizes. All right. And knock all these screws out. Alright, I have taken all the screws out of the box. And um, just while I'm actually here, note that uh, there are bushes here. Stainless looking bushes. And uh, I think the first version of the APS V2 box that I ever had, had bearings. I think. From memory, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure it had bearings, and um, I'm not a huge fan of bearings in gearboxes uh, because they fail. So it does appear that um, they might have changed to bushes on this version, which is good in my opinion, and I'm going to unscrew this screw, which attaches the mag terminal. Uh, because it's attached to the top half of the box. Um, 
I would I, I much prefer it when mag terminals are mounted to the bottom half of the box that way you can leave them attached and when you open the box um, they don't come up with the shell all right so in accordance with the prophecy everything is jumped out of place um, what's super interesting is there's no there's no bevel gear It's up in here. The bevel gear is actually up in here. There it is. <laughs> All right. So I'm just gonna uh, pop these bits back into place. Seems where the gearbox stopped was not ideal. All right. There we go. That's a better spot. Now I can line things up. Okay, it looks like there's some shims in there. Over here on the top half as well. Um, that's good. It's nice that someone cared enough to put shims in. It's always nice when that happens. Sometimes people don't care. Look at the size of this nozzle. It's massive. That's what's required to get a uh, V2 to work with a J9 um, T-piece. Huge nozzle, but I, I do like that nozzle though. I'm a fan of that nozzle. I much prefer this nozzle over the V2 type nozzle. Larger diameter. Although it does, I mean you will lose a bit of volume between the cylinder and the barrel, but you know, it's, that's neither here nor there. Let's just have a look at how much compression this thing has. Nice. Hey, hey, full metal rack. Full metal rack. I love it. I love a metal rack. I love, love most racks, to be honest, but I love metal racks the best. Um, compression with the nozzle on it wasn't awesome. Compression without it isn't super great either. I could probably whack an O-ring in that. Um, I'm gonna put an O-ring in it because like I'm here and that's what I do. And let me see what I got. Probably got a few green O-rings kicking around, so I will throw a green O-ring in this, and we'll see what happens. All right, gonna put a green O-ring on. Put a little bit of oil in there as well. Still not, still not awesome. It does sound like it's leaking from the O-ring. There is just a little bit of a rough edge on the bottom of this plunger head. I'm just running a blade around it, just sort of trying to take off any flashing. I'm not sure if that's causing it not sure if that's causing the seal issue or or what but there's just it's just just I'm just cleaning it up just a little just to see if that improves it and get the green o-ring on there oh yeah now we're talking. I'm going to put a few drops of oil in there as well. So I think maybe there was just a little bit of, um, a little bit of, uh, uh, molding, flashing, 
something in the in, from the from the manufacturing process that was just a little bit dirty on the edge of that plunger. Uh, hopefully that should be good now. Uh, put a few drops of oil in there and let's take a look at the rest of this box. Looks like we've got some uh, hardened metal gears. Um, APS always seem to run with this <laughs> the sector delay on the uh, on the sector gear. I don't I don't know why. There is a little bit of solder on the end. There's a bit of solder on the end of my um, tablet plate. Is that solder? Yeah, there is. A bit of solder. That's weird. Um, probably a... Oh, no, no, it's not solder. Is it a bit of... Ah. They've actually, they've actually modified... Okay. Alright, alright. They've modified this V2 from the original V2 with additional tappet plate clearance in the front of the housing here so they've run an end mill straight up here they've just got like a um, I don't want to say like a four mil end mill and they've just run it straight up the inside of the gearbox straight up there you can see it right there uh, let me get in there for you can you see it just there so yeah just straight there they've run an end mill up there just taken and they've literally taken one millimeter off of it um, and done the same on the other side as well yeah just so they can get that extra travel for the for the gel blaster gearbox because you know we need that extra bit of travel for the gels that's uh... that's cool that's interesting the way they've done that uh... i... what did i do when i did my... my oh uh, yeah so i ended up instead of clearancing here i clearanced here and actually moved the um, the whole cylinder head back one millimeter instead of milling out the front. But you know, achieving the same results basically. Uh, I like this I like this way better than than what I did because um, this way you can retain the full the full cylinder. Full cylinder. All right. Overall, I mean. I think this is pretty. There could be some. Uh, there could be some radiusing uh, done inside this gearbox. Um, but I mean, other than that, it looks pretty solid. I think if you want to buy a blaster straight off the shelf, ready to go, and you don't want to have to ever mess with it, this is probably a good option. If you do want to like spend all your, you know, all your spare time teching, then you know you probably. Maybe this isn't your your bag, but uh, for those of you, which is I think a lot of people who just want to buy something that works, I think this is a good option. And uh, I, I I had the AK as well, the APS AK, and I was pretty impressed with that uh, out of the box how it performed. So I I'm going to put it back together, then we're going to see if this O-ring actually made any difference. I always give people heaps about not being able to tech if they can't put a bevel gear in and an anti-reverse catch without using some special specific tool or bending the spring or doing some weird trick that only they know of because it was passed down from their grandfather to their father to them and it's the only way that special secrets know how to keep the anti-reverse catch from jumping out and here I am. So, when I have an anti-reverse catch which just doesn't want to play ball with me, there is one trick that I do and one trick only. Nine times out of ten I'll be able to hold it open like that and just pop the bevel down in there and it'll sit. For that one time out of ten it doesn't sit, I just grab a magnet out of an old hard drive and I pop it underneath where the um, anti-reverse catch is and that holds it there. Nine times out of ten you shouldn't have to do that but you will get that one time when it, it just doesn't want to play ball. This is one of those times. So there you go. That's my technique. That's the only trick I do with the anti-reverse things. Um, 
I don't glue them in place. You know who I'm talking to. Um, <laughs> I don't uh, bend the springs or anything. Yeah, I just do a magnet. I've got a magnet which is stuck to the bottom of my desk all the time, just in case. Now, oh, there we go. Now, move the safety out of the way. There we go. Pop that box back together. And then you can remove your magnet. Um, yeah, I did that on, on camera because uh, a lot of people do ask about putting it back together. Um, I will have to uh, just open it a, a fraction again to get this uh, spring back in for the uh, faux bolt. But I'll do that on I'll do that off camera. I'll uh, put it all back together, and then next time you see it, it will be ready to hit the chrono again. Incidentally, if you did just hear my email tone in the background, cause uh, cause you would have, cause it just went off. Uh, that was the sound of someone buying me a coffee. Spartan fifty nine just bought me a coffee. Thank you very much. Cheers. By the way. If you're there and uh, you're watching this video and you're thinking, geez, that's pretty cool. Thanks, Guido, for going to the effort of doing all this so I don't have to. Um, and you did want to shout me a coffee, four or five bucks, whatever it is, just head down to the link down in the description there and you can buy me a coffee. Cheers. Thank you, everyone, for those of you who have bought me a coffee. Uh, for what it's worth, every now and then I do drop... Yeah, little exclusives just to the people who, who buy me coffees. So um, that happens. Because uh, I, like I like to kind of give back to those who support me as well. Um, so, yeah, it's only little things, but it all, it all counts. It all counts. All the little things make one big thing. All right, I'm going to put this together now, I swear. I know I promised. I know I promised I'll put it together. But it just wouldn't be real if I didn't check the shimming. I can't even get to that one, it's under the selected plate. The uh, spur looks like it's got a A little bit of movement there. Yeah, that, that could do with a shim, actually. Yes, alright, so there's, there's, um, probably point Two of a mil. If I was to take a stab, there's a there's a, there's a bit of movement here. Um, maybe even point three of a mil. Uh, I'd have to get my verniers out to check specifically, but there is a, a little bit of slop in those gears. I'll probably um, I'll probably actually pop pop them out and uh, chuck some small shims in there, especially on. Especially on that um, that spur, that spur is quite loose. Um, it did have some shims on it, but could do with maybe a couple more, maybe a couple more. All right, let's give this another crack on the chrono. I've I've actually fitted the um, the muzzle device that. Uh, was in the box that wasn't the orange one. 310. 307. 307. 280. 310. 307. Pretty consistent. 307. 307. 310. 304. 301, 
304. So, pretty consistent in the 300s. Um, I did whack that other O-ring in there. Um, whether that did or did not make much improvement. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it seems fairly consistent and around probably about the same as uh, what it was. I mean, I wasn't expecting massive gains in FPS just from an O-ring. Uh, so, but 300, it's, it's right on the line of field legality. I think it's like even just a little bit over. Well, there it is, the Tactical Edge Ghost, 300 FPS, alloy, 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 lots of metal bits, very nice to hold, very nice to fire, um, probably right on the, right on the limit of field legality, maybe just a touch over. If you're looking for something with metal gears and metal gearbox, metal receiver, metal most bits that you don't have to change or touch I I think this is a winner I think it's pretty good value for what you get like it is a high-end blaster and it does come with a high-end price tag but given the amount of high-end blasters that I've seen lately that have a massive price tag sometimes even uh, twice as much as this the performance or lack thereof that I've seen from some of the other you know high-end blasters I reckon this is a good solid little performer if you just want to pick something up off the shelf and go skirmish with it and not have to change it not have to tech it all day gen 8 mags which are you know easy to get off the shelf everyone's got them I like it I like it it's not the highest end blaster I've ever seen but it is definitely a good blaster out of the box performance uh, if you just don't want to change anything. Anyway, that's me for another night. I've been a busy boy today, so I'm going to call it. Don't forget, you could buy me a patch. Buy me a patch? You could buy me a coffee. You could buy yourself a patch. It's a long. It's been a long day, guys. <laughs> Alright, links are in the description. Peace out.